In this week's episode of Working with Evernote, I'm going to show you how I use Evernote with Dropbox. Hello, I'm Carl Pauline and in this episode, episode 64 of Working with Evernote, I want to show you how I use Evernote with Dropbox. Now, this has come about because of the last two episodes I've shown I've been showing you what Evernote is great at and what Evernote is not so great at. And I have a user question from Jerry <coughs> who asked me about how I use Dropbox with Evernote and I think this is a really good uh, episode that I can show you how I use the two together. Now essentially the way I use Evernote and Dropbox together is with my current projects list. I use Dropbox to hold all my editable documents. So PowerPoint files, although I don't actually use PowerPoint, Keynote files, Pages files, PDFs actually I do use Dropbox for and anything that basically I have to do some kind of work. So at the moment, for example, one of my current projects is a textbook I'm co-authoring with a professor here in Korea. And what I'm doing is I'm actually designing the book in Adobe InDesign. So I'm keeping my InDesign file and my images file in Dropbox because Evernote is just not gonna work for that. But, meeting notes, notes I have when I'm speaking with the professor, then I am actually holding those in Evernote and I link the two together. I will show you what I mean when we move into Evernote and Dropbox to see this. And so I find that the two work together. Now I use Dropbox, it doesn't matter if you use Google Drive or you use iCloud, although iCloud might be a little bit more complex, but um, iCloud is very good and I do use that a lot. But for current projects that I'm working on, then really the two, pro the two storage areas that I'm using are Evernote for my meeting notes and notes that I have about the, uh, about the book or any other matters related to a current project. And I also keep the editable files like Pages files, Keynote files, InDesign files, etc. They're kept in Dropbox. Okay, it's much easier if I show you what I mean. So let's go into Evernote and Dropbox and I'll show you what I mean. But before I do that, please guys, if you like this video, please click on the like button down below there. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you would just click on subscribe and that way you'll get all the videos. You get notified of all my videos as and when I release them, which I'm releasing about three to four videos a week. And I would love for you to get the benefit of all the stuff that I'm sending out there so that you too can become even more productive and get more of the stuff that are important to you done. Okay, let's go into Evernote and I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that if you look in my notebooks here, let's just close that. So in my notebook, I've got quite a few notebooks in here. The one I really, the one that I taught that I use with Evernote and Dropbox is in my current project stack. So I have a, a current project that I'm working on now, Business Creativity, which is a textbook that I'm working on. So let's go into this and I have a number of things in here. So if you look at the numbers, I've got a business creativity meeting which was on the 16th of June. I made some quick notes in that. Uh, uh, the, the students and the, that were doing the pilot course, they did a presentation. So I actually uh, put in some a scan document and then some notes on the students themselves. Uh, business creativity lessons, these were some of the things that we were talking about that I played around with. And then I had another meeting with the professor, Dr. Min, and we were just looking at, these are just some of the notes that I've made from that particular thing. So these are the sort of things that I'm keeping in. Here's an article that I found that I thought would be very useful to share with the students and so on. So this is where I keep all sorts of things in related to uh, the course that we were talking about. And this is all that I've actually kept in here. And most of the, some of these articles that I've kept um, this is uh, an article, uh, Amir from Todoist, that is featured in the book 
a story about him, How to Find Your Passion, another book. So some of them, we had a meeting in January. So I've got the table of contents we'll discuss there. And all sorts of things that we've got in here, a Skype call that I had with another co-author on this particular uh, project. So these are the kind of project notes that I'm keeping in Evernote. Now, if we move into my Todoist, you'll see that I also, in my current projects, this is my current projects here, I, in, in Dropbox, I should say, it's called 03, I called it number three, just to make sure it's up near the top, and it's called Current Projects. And I've got my business creativity book in here. Now, let's just change the view because this is that's going to look. So in here, we've got a mixture of PDF files, Microsoft uh, doc, Word file, Pages file, Keynote files, all sorts of stuff that I've kept in here. There's folders in here as well for images. And then I mentioned about the InDesign um, folder that's in here because it's just not going to work. Now, the InDesign thing is only seven megabytes. That doesn't seem very much, but actually that includes all the images because it's linked to this folder. So they need to be in the same place. Now, that's just not going to work in Evernote. So in here, I've got like in my teaching file here, I've got the, from when I was teaching at the actual university, I've got my uh, keynote files and some Excel files in here. But if you look at the keynote files, I mean, they're 124 megabytes big, 107 megabytes big. I mean, for me, although they will go into Evernote, they're just so big, it's just not worth putting in there, particularly as I have a cloud services system like um, Dropbox. So I keep everything related that are, as I mentioned in the introduction, editable files I keep in uh, Todoist. Uh, sorry, Todoist. I keep in Dropbox. And then the notes files I keep in here. Now, I did mention that you can link uh, between Dropbox and you can link between. So let's just say I want to link, uh, make a link to the book in here. Now, I, the book that I'm actually doing. So let's go down to the uh, InDesign and click on the InDesign. And all I have to do, particularly on a Mac, now I have no idea how you do this in Windows. I do apologize. But if you click on the control, I can actually get copy Dropbox link. I click on that and then I can go into my um, Evernote and I can just paste that there. So now when I click on that, that's going to take me to the Dropbox folder, but it's going to take it to me through the inter, uh, interweb service. So I can just download the file from there. That's how I would be linking things together. More importantly, though, is I can actually, uh, let's go a presentation here. Let's say I've got the lessons here uh, and I want to link that, sorry, to my, yeah, I want to link that to say a keynote file that I'm using. So I go into my teaching folder. Uh, I click on that again, a control click. I can get copy the Dropbox link, move over here. Where am I? Move over back to my Evernote and I can just say, okay, this one is related to that file. So I can just paste the link in there. And that's how I'm linking my Evernote and Todoist together. Now, in this case, I didn't because the file is not that big in my opinion for me, but if it was getting really, really huge, that is how I would do it so that I'm linking the actual file to my Dropbox account. Okay, hopefully that cleared up some of the issues that came up over the last couple of episodes where I've shown you that Evernote is good for and not good for. Hopefully that might give you some ideas how you can link Evernote and Dropbox together or indeed Google Drive if you prefer to use Google Drive. Okay, thanks very much for watching this episode and I just wish you all now a very, very productive week.